Hello, my name is Kaylin Watson. I'm a software engineer at Focus Labs, and we've been doing a lot of coding and work with AI. Today, I'm gonna walk you through a debugging process of a RAG type application. I went through this process myself when I was updating the company knowledge base. This is a RAG application that lives on our company website that allows potential employees or potential clients learn more about who and what Focus Labs is. I'm using Python and I'm using LangChain, specifically LangChain Expression Language as my framework. I'm using OpenAI's GPT 3.5 Turbo model. I like using 3.5 while doing a lot of the basic development or basic debugging because it's a lot cheaper. It's only a couple of cents per day versus uh, you know, up to hundreds of dollars or whatever that four turbo will cost. And I find that a lot of the basics of debugging can be accomplished just as well with a slightly dumber model. For context of what I was working on, I was adding this role of like human or this would be where a potential employee or potential client would be able to come in and personalize their perspective, whether they're a uh, designer or a uh, CEO or developer, they'd be able to have a little bit more customization in their responses from the AI and from the app. And yeah, conversation memory broke. Uh, so let me show you exactly how that works. So I have this query service. The query service wraps around the chain. Um, so I evoke, invoke the chain there with the question. Uh, the concept of a session ID is where a, uh, each client, a uh, browser client, has a session ID in their cookies. It's just a UUID. Um, so that way individual users have different uh, conversations. And then we have this role. Uh, this client then handles the returning of the answers back to the API as well as saving memory and logging it down below. So now that's set up, let's go ahead and ask our question. Um, all of the um, actual retrieval has been working. Um, as you can see here, we have our response with our results. The core va values of Focus Labs are love your craft, listen first, and learn why. Those are correct, that's valid, that looks good. Uh, but we see a little bit more problems when I ask it to tell me more about the first one. I would expect it to tell me more about the love your craft, but instead we see the response is something about TDD and how red is the first step. Uh, it seems to be pulling based off of the, like the first one, I'm guessing is the semantic search that it's pulling. And it's pulling that from a blog that we have on TDD. So since this conversation history uh, broke while I was implementing the role, I'm going to make sure that I don't break the role while I refix the conversation history. So to make that a little bit more obvious, I'm going to change the system prompt to be something like answer the question in a role accent, just to make sure that I have the uh, right variables uh, passed down to the system prompt like I expect. Um, we'll go ahead and change this back later, but again, debugging makes it a little bit clearer. So just to make sure that the uh, role is being used, we should see it use a pirate accent. So yeah, we see R matey perfect. Alrighty, so where do I start? Well, first let's go back to uh, a rough diagram of our app. I'm very visual, so this works for me. Um, we have this conversation memory, we have this question, which is like, given the conversation memory, rephrase the question to be a single question. That's what we're kind of looking for. We retrieve the documents and then we have the answer and then a big note to myself, don't forget to save memory. So that's, let's work our way backwards. Um, considering that, uh, well, when I rerun this, the sources 
that we saw before is that it was coming from a blog. Yeah, here it is. The blog, it's coming from the context. So that makes me think that this like answer uh, block or this answer logic is not the problem. I think it's doing what it's actually doing, um, considering that it's these are the sources that it's being given. So what I'm curious about is, and where I think, or where I looked next in my debugging process is this standalone question. So this standalone question is what I'm using to retrieve my documents. So considering it's polling documents that are about TDD, my suspicion is that that is incorrect. I know that LangChain has LangSmith, um, which is a debugging app for their chains. I don't have that set up. So I'm just going to pass this key all the way to the end and see if I can print that out and look at it. Um, so we'll just make sure that we pass standalone question in our from the output of our retrievers chain. So that'll be something that looks like this. Standalone question. And then we will do the same thing in our answer chain. So we'll make sure that we add that as an input. Uh, so we capture the inputs in this chain and then we answer the block. Um, and then in our query service, we should be able to add a new print statement that is um, stand alone question. So then we should be able to just pull that from the key. So stand alone question. So we see our standalone question for the first one is what are the core values of Focus Labs? That proves that there's like another kind of like rewording going on. It is reaching out to an LLM to get that rewording. Uh, but this standalone question, I would expect it to be something like, uh, instead of what can you tell me about the first one, it should be something more like, uh, what can you tell me more about uh, love your craft. So again, that comes back to the prompt that I'm giving here, which is like, given the conversational memory, rephrase the question to be a single question. Or in code, um, that'll be in my chain. I have this uh, create question change chain, which has this condensed question prompt. And the prompt is given the following conversation and a follow-up question, rephrase the follow-up question to be a standalone question. So again, I would expect it to be, what can you tell me about love your craft? So considering it's not able to say that, I wonder if it's not seeing chat history correct. So let's do the same process like we did for the last one and just see what that chat history is. So we'll pass it out through the question chain here. So chat history item getter, chat history. So indeed, conversation memory should be in here. It should be loaded to the specific session ID key, and that should be stored in chat history. So if we bring chat history all the way through our complete chain, Um, hopefully we'll see if that sheds light on our problem. Um, spoiler alert, it does. I already went through this process, but you'll be able to see exactly how um, in a second here. Oh, um, and before I forget, we actually need to print this out. So print chat history. Some quick and dirty debugging, AKA print statements. Oops. Um, the reason why I'm doing this uh, print process, why am I not using 
uh, breakpoints. Well, I tried using breakpoints. I uh, tried throwing like a breakpoint here, and I tried adding like breakpoints here, but they're code that's run through when the chain is invoked is different than when this code is actually instantiated. So I found that I wasn't able to just add a breakpoint and then run this in debug mode um, and get it to stop and uh, with the actual loaded values. So that's why I'm using trusty old prints because it shows me the values that were created at runtime. So we see, ah, so that's the problem for the second question is there is no chat history. So we're not able to talk about what the first one is because we don't know what existed before. So something is wrong with how we are retrieving the chat history. And uh, speeding along the debugging process a little bit quicker we can see that we are pulling in the um, session ID here as a UUID, optional UUID, instead of a, when we save it, we save it with a string. So this saving functionality uh, saves the context with the session ID, the session ID being of a string value versus here when we um, invoke it, or um, actually execute the retrieval of the loaded memory, we are using uh, just what's ever passed in, and that is an optional UUID type. Um, so they are different types, and dictionary keys don't quite match. So if we change this to be a string instead of an optional UUID, or uh, we go through this question type and change that to be a string, then this should work. Um, we'll remove the imports to make it a little bit cleaner. Yeah, and so what we can see here is we indeed have this chat history. Um, this chat history is no longer blank. Uh, keep in mind that this is being printed out after we are saving the memory, so that's why we actually do see it. And then uh, this question should look a lot better. Yeah, we have the actual context, and then we have the standalone question, which looks like, can you provide me more information about the first core value? And so we get the first core value, be love your craft. It means we're passionate about our work and strive to be the best at what we do down to every detail. So this looks like it's working. Um, another trick that you can do to debug is um, in this save memory uh, method here, you can um, actually make sure that it was saved correctly. So that would look something like grabbing the session ID and load memory variables, and we want to load uh, the question, so that would look something like that. Um, and then you can just print this out, so then you get that real-time uh, rendering. Um, but yeah, um, this looks like it solved our problem, so now we'll be able to clean all of this up and change our prompts to no longer talk in a pirate accent. Um, I'll probably end up keeping these variables uh, passed all the way through and logging just for future debugability. But yeah, I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about today and show you about. Um, pretty short, pretty simple, but thanks for joining. Um, yeah. <laughs>